Hello, welcome to my book review of Flip Your Classroom, Reach Every Student in Every Class Every Day. The book is written by Jonathan Bergman and Aaron Sams, and of course it will be reviewed by me, Natalie Guzman. So before I introduce the book itself, I'm going to introduce its authors. So this man here to the right is Jonathan Bergman. He has spent over 24 years as a middle school and high school science teacher before being the lead technology facilitator at Joseph Sears School in Kenilworth, Illinois. He graduated from the University of Colorado Denver School of Education and Human Development with a Master's of Educational Technology. He's received the Presidential Award for Excellence in Math and Science Teaching in 2002 and it was named a semi-finalist for the Colorado Teacher of the Year in 2010. The gentleman next to him is Aaron Sams. Aaron Sams started teaching in 2000 at Los Altos High School in Hacienda Heights, which is not too far from Laverne. He has received the Presidential Award for Excellence in Math and Science Teaching in 2009 and co-chaired the committee to revise the Colorado Science Academic Standards. Sam holds a Master's of Education from Biola University, and as a classroom science teacher in Woodland Park, Colorado. Woodland Park High School is where the two of them met and decided that they needed to start, te needed to start rethinking the way they taught because too many of their students were missing class, and so they developed the flipped classroom model in around 2007. So to introduce the book, Flip Your Classroom, the main themes that I got from the book was that learning should and can be easy and enjoyable for both the teacher and the student. Another theme that I got was do what is best for you. Bergman and Sams emphasized that the model they use in their book is geared towards specifically them and their students and their class. And teachers who want to use this model should adapt and modify it to their students and their classroom. So the main audience is the teachers that would be using this model. It is also for the administrators and the policy or curriculum makers and technology coordinators because Without them approving this flipped classroom model, these educators can't implement it in their class. An argument explaining what flipped and flipped mastery classrooms are and why they are important and should be used everywhere. So that's the main thesis I got from this book. Um, Bergs and Sams really, Bergman and Sams, really cohesively go into what is important and why it's important. So I included a picture of its table of contents. They're very, very specific. And now I'm going to begin summarizing the book and its main important parts. So this is a model from the book um, it's just a comparison from a traditional classroom to a flipped classroom. So in a traditional classroom, you do homework that consists of um, problems or questions that need to be answered. And in class, you do the lecture and maybe an independent activity. Whereas in a flipped classroom, you do the lecture at home and you come to class to answer any questions about that lecture. And then you use the rest of the time to do that previously considered homework as independent practice or guided activities. So why should you flip your class? This was um, a big part of the book. They name quite a few reasons why you should flip your class, but I'm going to just go over seven of them. So nowadays students are attached to their phones and with this flipped classroom model, you will begin to speak the student's language because you're engaging in their technology use. It also helps the busy students who are too involved, whether it's with school sports, um, club sports, 
um, ASB, um, Renaissance, anything like that can cause interference in class, therefore missing important lectures. It can also help struggling students because if they don't know a topic too well, they are now allowed to pause and rewind their teacher, which helps them use that lecture to answer any questions that they have. It also increases um, student-teacher interaction because now the teacher is no longer with them while they do the lecture. So that means that they have to come to class the next day and ask any and all questions that they have about the lecture. It also increases student-to-student -student interaction because instead of having the lecture in class, they now do activities where students are encouraged to work together. It also improves teacher-student relations because of the student-to-teacher interaction previously mentioned. Um, in the book, Bergman and Sams actually introduce a short story about how they were able to help save one of their students' lives because the flipped classroom model allowed the students to interact and get really comfortable and feel safe in their classroom. The sixth reason is that it changes classroom management. So Bergman and Sams noted that in the flipped classroom, using the flipped classroom model, they no longer had as much disruptive behavior from students. Instead of having a big audience during lectures and using that time to act as a class clown, um, they were forced to interact with their classmates on a more intellectual level through those activities and those labs. The seventh reason is um, that it educates your parents the student's parents and makes your class transparent. So a lot of the times parents may question what is this teacher even doing in class that is allowing my student to fail. With this model, the class is actually all of the lectures are done at home. And a lot of the times the parents actually can sit next to their student and watch these lectures. And by doing so, It'll allow for an engagement, interaction, and conversation between the parent and student, which can help increase um, content knowledge. So the next part of the book that I thought was big was using why you should use the flipped mastery model. So the flipped mastery model is instead of everyone doing the same activities and same um let's say modules and lectures, they do it at their own pace. So this kind of model mostly teaches students to take responsibility for their learning. Instead of having teachers on their butt about getting an assignment turned in, they're now responsible for doing that because all of the students are not doing the same assignment with the same deadline. It also creates a way to help personalize and differentiate classes. This means that because there are so many different kinds of learners, whether it's kinesthetic, whether it's visual, whether it's um, verbal, um, the teacher can have these different learning styles implemented in different lectures and different videos and different PowerPoints so that these students can best learn at their own pace. It also makes learning the center of the classroom because the teacher is no longer standing up in front lecturing for 40 minutes. Now the students get to only worry about learning and understanding this content because they're going at their own pace. There is, there is no rush. It also gives students instant feedback because as they're going through the modules, or the lecture, there may be checkpoints and little questions to make sure that the students are actually learning all of this content. If they aren't, they're given opportunities for remediation by going back on the previous content and relearning to make sure that they can pass that checkpoint. It also reduces teacher paperwork because a lot of the stuff is now online 
and you kind of have to just go through and make sure that the students are getting their checkpoints they're doing all of the lectures and they're understanding all of this content it also changes the role of the teacher so Bergman and Sam's claims that the teacher is now the lead learner this means that they're all learning in this class students may have questions that the teacher doesn't know right off the back but in this model teachers are encouraged to research together with the student to find the answer to the problem to the question it also increases face-to-face -face time student interaction and hands-on activities because the lectures are still at home all of the activities will be in class and with the 75 minutes let's say of class time there can be lots of room for super cool engaging activities so in my analysis of this book there are quite a few strengths the first is that the chapters are very well organized as you could have seen in my example contents um, each chapter is very broken down for example chapter 2 is explaining the flipped classroom and then chapter 3 is why and then chapter 4 is how you can implement it it's all very step by step by step which is very good for the reader it is also very specific and easy to read um, it's only 112 pages it was super easy and a fast read for me because it flowed so nicely. I just wanted to keep reading because everything that I was questioning was answered in the next paragraph. It also thoroughly presents why and how a flipped classroom worked for them. So like I said, they did it because they noticed a lot of students were missing valuable class time. And so it may be a similar situation in your case but the book really broke down specifically for what worked for them what didn't work for them why did it work for them and I really enjoyed that the book also addresses basically everything possible about a flipped classroom like I said it was really easy for me to read because every new concept that I learned I had a little question and then in the next page or two that question was answered and if it wasn't the eighth chapter is frequently asked questions in which tons of people are able to just ask questions and they're already answered in the book it also included proof that it worked for others so throughout the book there are different quotes from other teachers other educators that showcase how the the model worked for them for example mark siegel from basking ridge new jersey said so being a not a non-tenured teacher in a district in a budget crisis i think you helped me secure a job for life Thank you so much. The work the two of you have done and how you have inspired me to take my teaching to a whole nother level. Um, he had previously talked about being observed by principals and then by the administrators because he was implementing this flipped classroom model. So unfortunately, there were a couple weaknesses. One of them being that it could be too much too soon. So like I said, the first four chapters were all geared towards this flipped classroom model. And then as soon as it hit chapter five, it was the flipped mastery model, which kind of got me a little confused. And I was like, whoa, that's a lot of information. The next weakness is that it could have used more concrete data. So in the ninth chapter, I believe, the authors use a couple tables to demonstrate how it worked it was test scores and they weren't very specific and it was just that i would have liked more evidence 
So the last weakness is that the book could have used and included some practical examples and resources. So Bergman and Sams explained that when you start creating your flipped classroom, you don't have to create your own pre-recorded lectures and use your own videos. You can just borrow and use videos that are already made, already produced, like videos that they have on their website. Unfortunately, the book doesn't give any links, any websites, any books, nothing to help the readers um, get a hold of some of those practical examples of videos and assignments and stuff. So that would have been really nice. Um, after weighing the weaknesses and the strengths, I think overall this book was extremely easy to read and had tons of valuable information. So like I said, I read it in one day. Um, it's not a big book, but I couldn't put it down. Every time I had a question, every time I found something even more interesting, it just kept getting better. Um, the book really broke down the flipped classroom model and the flipped mastery model very well. It included why it was important, all of the steps to get started, how to implement it, um, what you would expect from parents, what you expect from students and administrations. It's got everything you can think of in it. Um, and if it doesn't, there was those frequently asked questions in the back of the book. Um, so overall, I give it five out of five stars and I would definitely recommend the book. I will probably keep the book um, as I grow as an educator and use the information inside of it to help create a flipped classroom myself. So thank you guys for sticking with me and listening. I know it's probably a long book review, but I actually really enjoyed it and learned a lot. Um, I can't wait to see yours. And um, again, thank you. Bye-bye. Um,